I guess there's no more denying it. Summer is really coming to an end. Leaves are turning yellow, fruits are dropping, the growing season is over. What does this mean? What does this mean? The growing season is over. If we're growing bonsai, you have work every single month of the year. What are we going to do in fall? So, summer is ending. Fall is coming. What can you do right now to help your trees get through winter better? Here are a number of tips. Follow me or not and have healthy trees in spring. Fall or autumn. It refers, of course, to the falling of the leaves. Um, if you look at the leaves, the leaves that fall, they're brown, they're yellow. Why are these leaves yellow and brown? Why are they not green? They're not green because the plant is drawing all the nutrients back out of the leaves. They're bringing them back in storage. So what they're going to do, they take the chlorophyll, break it apart, put all the nutrients in the branches. As the tree is relocating all the resources from the leaves into the branches, Fall is also an excellent time to do a light trim, but especially to wire young branches on your deciduous trees. They're still full of moisture, very flexible, and the tree is investing heavily in getting all these branches settled for winter. So they're still putting on wood, they're still making more lignin, the trees are still getting harder. One of the questions I often get, when exactly do you do these things that you talk about in your videos? And of course I can tell you on the 1st of March or on the 1st of October, but reality is, it's triggered by nature. So I could say, well, as soon as you see mushrooms, it's full. Also not always true because it could just be triggered by a rainstorm. For me, I look at the phenology or the external things that you see on a plant. So if you see leaves on trees turning color, going from green to yellow, and it's not the middle of summer, for me, that's the trigger, fall is coming. That is also when I start doing the things that I've talked about in this video. Then I take all the way up to the point that the leaves are dropping and I take another two to three, maybe four weeks and I say, well, that is when fall ends for my trees. The green is gone, the yellows, the reds are left over and even over time, they'll absorb all those as well. What you're left with, pure cellulose. It's just the leaf with not all that much in there. Not all that much, I say, because this falls to the ground and over time, the next three to six months, bacteria, fungi, they all come in and it becomes compost. This compost is a nat natural fertilizer for the trees that we have everywhere around us. What can we learn from that? Well, one of the main things that we can learn from that is that plants are very, very effective in retrieving all the nutrients from the leaves. So nutrients are important, we say. We know this, of course, because as bonsaiana or bonsaiists, what is the word? bonsai hobbyists, we fertilize our trees. In spring, we add loads and loads and loads of fertilizer. A little bit of nitrogen, a bit of phosphorus, a bit of magnesium, calcium, iron. You think of it, we add it to the soil. Yet then autumn comes and people say, stop fertilizing your trees because a tree is not using any fertilizer now. In fact, if you now give the plant fertilizer, it will start growing again. Sorry, I don't agree. It's very nice to have all sorts of weeds, moss, leaves on the forest floor. But for a bonsai, it's not ideal. If you leave these here, lots of little insects, critters can hide in them. They bury in the soil, they eat your roots, they may rot the bark. So in fall, make sure you clean the surface of your pots before you put them in storage. That way you'll have less problems in spring. Another thing that you can do right now, as soon as the leaves are starting to drop, is dig up Yamadori or other nice plants that you find around the garden or neighborhood. It's a good thing that I'm here in this forest that is actually too far from my house and I didn't bring a spade because look at this beach. It's been chopped down maybe this year, it has a nice big trunk. Oh, maybe I should come back someday, try to pull this one out. Let's figure out who owns this forest. Now, if we look at such a hedgerow, leaves turning yellow, what do you think triggers the yellowing of the leaves? Do they have a calendar? Not really. 
do we, when we go get some food from the market, know it is full because the food is different? No. We wake up in the early morning and the grass is wet. There's clouds in the sky, temperatures are dropping, and actually um, the sun didn't get up until 8 in the morning this, today. It will set again by, early after, uh, by late afternoon. That is how we know season is over, summer is over, fall is coming, we're about to hit winter, and it's exactly the same for plants. They are triggered by a difference in day length, nighttime temperatures. How cold does it get? That is what puts the tree into motion to say, okay, I'm going to stop growing. Now it is time for me to take all the resources from my leaves, pull them back into the trunk, pull them into the branches, start creating new buds for next year. When it comes to grasses like corn, they, took, they take all the energy that they collect during the summer, they push it all down through the stem into these nice, nice cups of corn. Of course, a tree doesn't have that luxury. So what does a tree do? They take all the nutrients out of the leaves, they suck it into the branches and they put it in buds, they put it in the branches and they store it for next year. So next year they have reserves. So that's what a tree is doing right now. They're taking all the valuable resources that they have in the leaves and they're pulling them back into the branches. So why would you not fertilize? Apparently it is very relevant for the tree to get all the nutrients that they can. So what do I do right now, today? I'm going to fertilize my trees. I'm going to give them an extra dose of fertilizer. I'm not going to use organics because you know organics, they are dependent on bacteria, on fungi, on all sorts of microorganisms to break down the organic compounds and make it available to the plant. I'm going to use a chemical fertilizer today, dilute it in water and water all my plants with it as a nice little boost in preparation of winter. Fall is also the time of year that many insects put out eggs or find a place for them to feed over winter. So it is very beneficial for people who grow bonsai to take a spray, spray your trees against overwintering insects. These sprays, they're for sale as a soap or an oil. Um, it's basically a combination of a light oil with a bit of soap in water and you spray the whole tree until it is dripping. When it comes to winter, you could of course think the trees are dead in winter, nothing is happening. In fact, that's not really the case. Um, look at me. I'm wearing a jacket, I'm wearing a sweater, I'm wearing a t-shirt, all to make sure that I don't get cold. Now what do the trees do? The trees take all these nutrients, they take all the carbohydrates, everything that the big solar panels that the leaves really are have accumulated. All those sugars, they pump it back into the branches and they put it into the twigs, they put it in the fluids. Now what you get is a sap that is very rich on sugars. That sugar works as an antifreeze. Of course, this means that the plant will need to accumulate all those sugars. That happens from now. Um, we've had the first nights where temperatures were dipping towards frost and the plant is actively now creating antifreeze. They will continue doing this throughout winter. And around January, February, when winter in the Northern Hemisphere is at its peak, so when the nights are the coldest, that is when the plant reaches maximum concentration of sugars. So the plant is actually not asleep at all. It's just not growing on the outside as we would normally see, but on the inside, the plant is very, very active. So that's how a plant protects the branches against frost. Now let's look at the roots, the roots of a tree. They're down in the ground. And anybody who has ever built anything knows that the frost zone in Northern European countries typically is 60, 70, 80 centimeters. Much deeper than that, frost will not reach. So for roots, it is a big deal to be frozen. Normally the roots don't get all that cold. So if you want to protect your trees against cold in winter, what do you think you need to protect most? Of course, you need to protect the roots the most. Now you don't need to go and bubble wrap it all because in fact the soil is warmer than the air. So put your pots on the ground, shelter it from the sun, shelter it from the wind to protect it from the early frosts. Now there's a lot more that I can tell you about winter protection of your trees and if you're interested drop me a line down below in the comments and I'll think about making a more extensive video. For now this is a general overview right this is just general what do you do in fall to protect your trees. I don't want to go make a video of an hour um, I leave that to other people. So no it's not the time to just sit down relax and wait for spring to come. This is actually the time that you have to be active you have to prepare your trees get them ready for winter put them in a sheltered position 
think about pruning, think about wiring, spray them with a winter spray and clean up those pots, remove all the debris from it and yeah, have fun. So the period of the first change of color in the leaves until two to four weeks after leaf drop, that's the period of time that I do the activities that I told you about now. So as long as you stay four to six weeks away from the first real frost, you should normally be okay with the activities I just explained. Enjoy fall, prepare your trees, have a great winter. See you next time. Keep growing, bonsai.